All right, good afternoon, everyone. We're gonna go ahead and get started. So this session is being recorded. And so that's so we can send it to everyone who uh, was unable to attend during during this hour. Uh, so that's anything in the chat and the uh, the voices, of course, will uh, and the videos will be recorded uh, for this. So uh, my name is Jason Fisk and I'm the executive director of the Master of Legal Studies program. It's such a pleasure to be here with you today. Uh, we have with us three journalists who are currently students in our Master of Legal Studies program who, want, who are here to share their experiences and to answer any questions you might have uh, for them uh, about the program and or about, or about their experience uh, in the program. So we'll, uh, we'll save that towards the end. At first, I'm gonna just talk through uh, a few details about the program as some of you I know have uh, requested, has requested information and looked through information, but some of you haven't. Some of you have ju just registered and might not know anything about this program. So I just wanna give a few of the basics before turning it over to the main part, which will be talking uh, with the three of them. So first off, if, you, if you're if you unfamiliar with UCLA, as we do get people applying from all over the world for this program, uh, it is the number one public university in America and the number one ranked law school in Southern California. UCLA itself has 365,000 alums located right here in California, but the, uh, the alums are also located in all 50 states and five territories and uh, are located in 146 different countries throughout the world. So truly, if you're a journalist here in Los Angeles or in California or uh, anywhere, the, the network will certainly expand with you wherever you go, whether it be tomorrow or into the future. And also, if you're not from Los Angeles, which many of you are, of course, uh, you, you know about the, the beauty of Los Angeles and everything that's available to it. So one of those unique places where you can go uh, to the beach in the morning and to go skiing in the in the evening, later afternoon type thing. What a what a what a spot to be for for that type of thing. Uh, the the program itself is the Master of Legal Studies program has two options on how to complete it. And actually, of the three journalists we have here today, one is doing the full time program and two are doing the part time program. So we have uh, representatives from both actually here. The full time program can be finished in nine months, just two semesters. If you start in August. This August, you would graduate in May. Uh, it's generally for recent graduates, uh, but it's also for those who have some flexibility to take a sabbatical and take and take some time off work. And the commitment to it, of course, is is full time as far as how, how much time it would take to do that. Now, the part time program, on the other hand, which is what the majority of people do who are in our program, can be anywhere ranging from two to four years. So it's it's flexible. You're able to. Uh, pick each semester you can choose how many classes you want to register for and so you can and that if you take a couple classes a semester it'll pace you towards two years to graduate if you choose just to do one class a semester it'll pace you more towards four years but each semester you can kind of mix and match that if you like and land somewhere in between on that pace on average as far as the uh, classwork is concerned if you're taking a couple classes a semester which is a two-year pace which is what most of our part-time students are doing uh, that'll average about 20 hours a week on average of work uh, as classwork. And then if instead you only do like one class a semester, that'll pace you more towards four years and would be more like 10 hours of work a week on average. Now we've asked, now we have the, again, we have the three people with us today, our three students, they'll tell you their experience, but we did survey everybody in the program and we asked them to describe the program in a word. And then, so now here, so here are the top three words that we got back uh, from our students. The first one is challenging. The, uh, we, it is a rigorous program. The class, this is one, the top law school in Southern California. It's, it's, it's rigorous, but I, I would hope that's what you expect. I would hope that you would expect nothing less than it being challenging, but that's, so that is the first word that came back. But with that, we had a, a lot of students tell us that camaraderie was something that they felt because of how challenging the environment is, that a lot of uh, people became very close with others in the program uh, as like a bonding mechanism essentially to help support each other uh, through the, the environment. And then third is fun. So not everyone says it's fun, of course, but many did say that it's fun. You know, unlike maybe, you know, maybe some of you have master's degrees, maybe not, but let's, you know, rewind the clock back in your head to when you're in college. You know, some of the classes maybe you liked, others you didn't, maybe. 
but then uh, but this is a, a program you're doing by choice you're here because you want to and you have some sort of you know real life experience whether it be 30 years experience or five years of experience you have more context in which you're learning and so the experience will just be a different experience than it, whatever you had in the past with uh, previous degrees we do have a range of students in our program we have a lot of just really interesting dynamic people uh, from all sectors, from uh, nonprofit, government, private sector, ranging from CEOs to, to recent graduates and everything in between. So we, we, we definitely try to keep it a very diverse program as far as background, experience, race, ethnicity, all, all the above. Uh, we have lots of different organizations represented in, in the program, including three different ones uh, that will uh, they'll be able to share about in, in a little bit. But as far as the nitty gritty with the, the degree itself and what you could, would kind of expect for it, it's broken down into phases. And so the first phase is what we call the core curriculum. This is the required foundational courses. This will be five classes that are exclusively designed by the law faculty for the Master of Legal Studies students. These, these classes are in the uh, evenings. And so they would start at 6.30 p.m. Uh, and at 9.30 p.m. And for next year, uh, the classes would be Tuesday nights would be on campus at UCLA and then Thursday nights would be online. And so that if you're a part time student, that would be your whole that would be your schedule for the whole first year. It would be Tuesday night on campus starting at 630 and Thursday night online starting at 630. The second phase we call the specialization phase, and this is where you would take elective courses starting next year we're going to have a several different elective options that are online in the evenings. However, there's also going to be options. Uh, lots of classes available during during the day which will mainly be on campus if you so choose that's up to you as far as what you'd like to do but there are going to be uh, some options available for both then in your final semester you'll take a capstone seminar so this class is meant to be the culmination of your learning experience and uh actually for all of you it'll be a very uh it, it won't be uh i think it'll be a little come more naturally for journalists because it's, you know, you're doing research and then you'll write on a topic of your choosing based on what you've learned. And so that's what the culmination of your learning will be in that class. It is at least a 26 unit program to complete. Many are op can opting to go much more than that. Uh, the only, some say how, it's more like, well, how many can I, some say 26 is good, let me out of here. Others will say, how, well, how many can I do? I wanna do way more. And there's actually only a cap in time. There's not a cap in units. So if you start from whenever you start the program, you have four years to complete the degree. So you, you can do as many as units as you want, or as few as you want, at with at least with at least completing 26. Now, really quickly here, we have eight different specializations to choose from, and so we our journalists generally, you know, have different different reasons for doing the program and maybe different topics they want to focus on. But you have you do have eight choices. One is business law. We have employment and human resources law. We have entertainment and media law. We have environmental law. We have government and national security law. We have health law and policy. We have law and technology. We have public interest law. Now, a lot of journalists will tend to go towards the public interest law because it's a lot of different types of topics, but of course, some are interested in health, some are others. So it's that's totally up to you. But if you really want to just have a very the most broad ability to take different topics. Uh, general studies is what we suggest because then there's no limitation on what elective classes you take. You can do any ones you'd like and that'll be fine. And you'll, you just need to do the 26 units and then you graduate. But if there is one particular area you're the most interested in, then, then you'd be specializing. Now, uh, for tuition and scholarships, the tuition is uh, 2,227 per unit. And it's, a, a, as I said, a 26 unit program. The, there is, and what you all, many of you are here to hear about today, is the one a full tuition scholarship for a journalist. And so that lots of people are then asking, well, well, who, what does that mean, journalist? Am I eligible? Am I eligible? So we, we interpret this broadly. So a journalist, maybe you're a reporter, maybe you're an editor, maybe you're uh, in broadcast media. Uh, all of these things apply. We, we, we cast a wide net here as to who is eligible under that, uh, under the definition. And if you are, if, if none of those seem to fit you and you're curious, send us an email and we'll tell you if you're eligible or not uh, for, for the scholarship. A couple notes, you know, we're lawyers here, so I want to give the fine print. So the, the fine print of it is it's a full tuition scholarship intentionally worded. Uh, this is, this scholarship is 
the law school is just do it, putting it upon themselves to give the scholarship, but we don't have control over the university level fees. So the university fees would still apply. And of course, buying books. So just, you know, just want to be totally upfront about the, what the cost would be. So the university fees are just about uh, range from eight, about 800 to $900 a semester. So you are still be paying, you know, a couple thousand, few thousand in total, depending on how long you stay with us uh, for the degree, even if you get the full tuition scholarship, you know, just, just want to let you know. So that's, that is one uh, that would be a uh, cost for it spread out over the length. Additionally, the scholarship is for the first 26 units of the program. So units 27 through 32 are actually free. And so you thus you'd be able to tuition free so that you'd be up, able to do up to 32 units tuition free. If you go beyond that, then you'd be at charged a normal tuition at, at that point. The, uh, the deadline to apply for this scholarship is April 1st. So note that's different than the, the general application deadline, which is April 26th. And so we're only consider applicants for this scholarship if you complete and submit your application by April 1st. So just wanna you know, put that out there and make that very clear. Now, uh, we do have you know, only one scholarship here. However, uh, only one person will get it, but we anticipate having more than one journalist in the program this next year. Uh, starting. And so we want, we also want to talk about the other scholarships available too. Uh, the first is the Bruin scholarship, uh, which is up to 20% off of tuition and all applicants are immediately considered for this. So this, again, these are, if, if you don't get the full, the full tuition scholarship, these would be the additional ones. If you fall, if you fall into that category. So there's still the Bruin scholarship. And then additionally, uh, we have what's called a blue and gold scholarship, which is a needs-based scholarship. But importantly, and I'll emphasize here is this scholarship, the government and nonprofit leader scholarship. Now, virtually everyone here, I imagine as a journalist is working for a for-profit entity. However, we are including journalists under this definition. And so thus all of you would be eligible for this scholarship as well. And so that's how it would work is by April 1st, you would apply for the program and you, if, you, uh, if you are a finalist for admission, you'd then be sent to an interview. So there's an interview stage for admission to our program. And then, if, then at that point, if you're accepted to the program, you then would be awarded a scholarship. So if you're a journalist, you'd, you'd get some level of Bruin scholarship and you get some level of government and nonprofit leader scholarship. It's gonna be, a, for journalists, it's gonna be a very generous scholarship. Then we will then take the finalists for who the who the accepted um, who the admitted uh, journalists are, and take them to another interview, which will be the final interview, which is just for the full tuition scholarship. So thus, you can see it'll be a, a couple of stages. But if so, if you don't get the full tuition scholarship, of course, we'd still love for you to come because you're admitted, and you'd still have a, a very hopefully a very generous scholarship. Uh, but so that'll be available. So just go on and kind of talk you through the process there as far as what you can expect. Now, uh, without further ado, we have three our three students here who are all journalists who'd love to share their experiences with you. And I'm just gonna turn it over to each one of them individually. I'll call on each of them. And if at first, if you wouldn't mind uh, just saying who you are and just a little bit of background about yourself and then we'll then I'll start asking questions about the program. Uh, Ryan, can, can we go ahead and start with you? Yes, thank you, uh, Jason. Hi. Um, yes, um, and I apologize, by the way, for my lack of video. I think I might have clicked something on my computer that's not not uh, letting me go here. So, um, yeah, my name is Ryan Carter. Uh, I'm the city editor for the Los Angeles uh, Daily News uh, newspaper, uh, and um, I, I was, gosh, I was attracted to the to apply because, um, you know, it. it I got an email on it and it it came at a time when I was thinking about uh, school. It came at a time when I thought I could enrich my knowledge in some way. And so it just seemed to sort of check the right boxes for me um, and that that it could really enrich my sort of depth of knowledge in what I do, both as a journalist, um, but also um, just internally kind of um, um, managing a newsroom and sort of, uh, you know, uh, contracts, different, different elements of, of, of the work inside, intern, in, inside the newsroom. Um, and so far, the experience, it's been um, really, really something, what can I say? Uh, um, basically, 
uh, I have, when I get on the call with a source these days, um, uh, particularly if that source is a lawyer or somebody who deals with sort of reg regulatory, a sort of regulatory politics or regulatory policy, um, there's a, there's that language that I feel like I'm absorbing from each class. You know, I'm certainly no expert in any of this, but um, I, I feel a, a lot more confidence as I'm talking to to people. So, um, putting that all together feels feels really good so far. Uh, thanks, Ryan. Let's go ahead and go over to uh, Jacqueline. Hello. Thank you all for for coming today. Um, my name is Jacqueline Cosgrove, and I am the LA County government reporter at the Los Angeles Times. Um, I was attracted to apply because, um, wow, I mean, first off, the email showed up in my inbox, and I actually thought it was spam. Um, I was like, what is this? Free scholarship, whatever. Um, <laughs> and then this, like, nagging voice kept, like, telling me to check it out, and you know, as I was looking at the public interest specialization, I thought, wow, like this is so many things that I'm interested in. Um, and uh, thus far, my experience has been really interesting. Um, I totally agree with Ryan that, you know, now when I'm in conversations with people, I'm listening differently. Like this morning, I was in an interview and someone used a term talking about the mental health system. They said um, the term gravely disabled and I stopped them and I said, well, what's the legal definition of that term? And, you know, that is probably not a question I would have thought to ask immediately. And we actually got into like an interesting conversation about case law that I don't think I would have had previously. And so that's just like one small example, but um, I know Ryan and I, we actually ended up in court um, together covering the same thing. Um, and uh, cause we're, you know, technically competitors and we were you know, talking to each other as we were listening to, you know, the attorneys and the judge talk. And we were like, oh my gosh, like we know literally everything they're talking about, you know, cause there's those times in court where you just sort of like, none of this is relevant. None of this, my readers will understand. And you sort of just like zone out until they get to the important parts. And we were just laughing at just you know, we were amazed at how much we'd already learned because we weren't even done with our first semester. So it's been super interesting. And I will also say that the camaraderie among the fellow students, especially since we're all like at home doing this has been really great um, because you know, the majority of people are working professionals who are managing very full-time jobs on top of this. So, you know, great experience so far. Thanks, Jacqueline. And uh, Penny. Hey there, so speaking of working full-time jobs, I'm not working a full-time job. I actually took a leave of absence. My name is Penny Arevalo and I am um, the city editor of the Pasadena Star News, the Whittier Daily News and the San Gabriel Valley Tribune and the scholarship was very generous even though I did not get the 100% um, full ride, but everything Jason said was true. And I um, just thought, wow, this is a great opportunity to kind of fulfill my lifelong dream of getting a master's. And I'm all this dirt, the grand dom of the program. Um, <laughs> and so I um, basically am almost done and that's a little scary, but it's gone by so fast and it has been really fun. Um, fun redefined if <laughs> I, um, I really appreciate being exposed to all these different areas of law that are exactly what my reporters, SD reporters cover. So I'm in land use um, and they cover development. I'm in education law, they cover school boards. Um, I've done environmental law, I'm in environmental justice. I'm in a class called social media and the future of democracy. It's amazing, the professors are amazing. Um, and it's given me a new perspective. I mean, I've always been kind of allergic to press releases and kind of that whole publicity industry, but now I even see through it more like these lawsuits that, I, that I'm reading, especially the education law professor has us reading current litigation. So they're, they're not even opinions. They're, they're, there's a bunch of lawsuits um, filed in light of COVID and I'm reading, I'm going, wow, we were kind of bamboozled by the superintendent. <laughs> and so ne never again, <laughs> never again, my reporters are going to go after stories even harder. I can't wait. 
Fantastic. So uh, the, the next question I have for you all is, so a lot of people are in, you know, varying areas of journalism. So some, like I kind of mentioned at the beginning, some are in broadcast media, some are at various you know, entities throughout California and throughout the country. But what do you see as potential commonalities with the with everyone who's kind of in general journalism generally as far as why this program might benefit them or why they should be interested in thinking more about doing this program for them if you have any additional thoughts on that and uh let's start with orion what, what are your kind of thoughts on that yeah no i i i i think jason that the that that for for me it, a lot of it is that sort of the, the language of the law. I mean, that's not going to, you know, change. I feel like, um, you know, for instance, Jacqueline and I were taking a a, um, a criminal injustice class uh, seminar uh, this semester. And I mean, I can't imagine, you know, whether it's a print reporter, a print editor, a broadcast editor or broadcast reporter who wouldn't draw, you know, similar um themes out of of a class like that um whether it be um you know cr criminal exon exonerations and um uh, you know or criminal justice reform i mean those things are 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 i think common across um you know across media and you know like i said earlier it's just a it, there's a there's sort of a depth there that i think could could cut through whether whether you're on television, radio, or print. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, Jacqueline. Totally agree. Um, the class that Ryan mentioned, um, you know, we're learning in there, like, you know, 10 different ways that people are, you know, how people are wrongfully convicted or inappropriately convicted, you know, and so that is applicable to any journalist because you're you're able to listen better when you're in court and hear what you know tricks that you know a, a prosecutor, for example, might be using that you know are red flags. Um, I also think it's been really interesting to learn about the way that judges think, um, which is something I honestly hadn't spent a ton of time thinking about as a journalist. But you know, in one of our classes, we talked a lot about. Um, ethics and different, just the different ways that judges will decide cases. And I just found that to be really valuable in better understanding what makes a judge make a particular decision. So that was really interesting to me. And also just in learning these different like ethical ways of thinking, I think it also like makes you as a journalist pause and think about your own personal ethics um, because you know, not all of us had ethics courses in journalism school. And so that's been really great for me to slow down and actually like think about what I believe as a journalist, if that makes sense. So just a lot, it's, it's just been really nice to like have a reason to sit and read and force myself to think over things that otherwise I probably wouldn't be taking the time to do. Thanks, uh, thanks Jacqueline. Uh, Penny. Yeah, I would just say that the law intersects just about every um, type of article we would write or you know, piece that we would put or every podcast that's out there, whatever practice you're doing of journalism. Um, so even if the classes that I mentioned don't tickle your fancy, you may be um, more of a business reporter and business law would be great. Or you would be you know, an ent entertainment type reporter and entertainment law is really interesting to use. So there's all these different facets. Um, in our legal communication and analysis class, we also took a lot of First Amendment cases and analyzed them. And that's just helpful to us all as an industry. So it, you are going to find your niche. There's even food law, which I really regret not being able to take. I still wanna take food law. Um, so like, it, it's just the entire gamut of life. Um, that you can explore and you can apply to your careers. No problem. Uh, th thanks, Penny. And so the the next question, uh, before I ask the next question, I, I do want to acknowledge something. So uh, in this room, you know, I'm, I'm asking questions of our journalists, students, and all of you are journalists listening. And I feel like I'm the only non-journalist in the room, yet I'm the one who's supposed to be asking the questions here. So this is like, I'm a little anxious here through this process. But it, anyways, uh, that's, uh, so as my next question is, 
Uh, two of you are part-time students, one's a full-time student, but talk to me about balancing your schedule. So naturally, the, you know, the classes are rigorous. They take time. You're in the class. You, you do reading and such. You might talk with your co colleagues and other students. H talk to me about how do, you, how do you balance your schedule with, with the, you know, the last time I checked, the news cycle never sleeps. So how, how, how does this work for you? Let's start with uh, Ryan. Wow. Well, listen, it's still, it's for me, it's still a work in progress. There's no doubt about it. I'm an, I'll be in this. This is a journey for me. I, I admire Penny so much for, for, for she's, for the fact that she's almost there um, with it, but um, I still got another, you know, year and a half in this program at least. And so um, I'm still working through some of the kinks. Um, I would say that uh, we'll certainly, uh, you know, in a broad sense, you got to pace yourself. But a big thing for me has been able to communicate, just just keeping communications going with my with my uh, supervisor at work. Like that's been a huge thing for me. So like when things come up, uh, when I'm a little squeezed, when I'm feeling a little squeezed uh, in the day, um, just to be able to say, hey, can I? Um, I need to jump out a little earlier today um, so that I can prepare for class. Um, uh, or maybe, you know, if class went a little late one night or the work went late, I can, I can adjust. And so as long as I felt, I feel like as long as that communication line is open, it's been really, really helpful. Aside from just rigorous planning and just sort of, for me, rigorous planning is probably still not the best planning, but still, um, I have tried to stay looking ahead as far as I can so that I can communicate where that where those red flags could be so just sort of staying a little ahead of that has been really helpful but i'm not you know I, you know i i can't sugarcoat it because there were those nights when uh you know those back-to-back -back night classes um you know after a long day of work full time like you know covering covid or whatever it was um you know those so, you know, it, it, it's, um, and you only got like a, you know, maybe 20 minutes between work and, and class, something you have to think about if, you know, if you, if, 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 you know, you, you, you really want to commit to this, um, but it's totally doable at the same time. And your professors, I think they get it too. They understand your, 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 your fellow classmates understand as well, um, the situation that you were, we're all coming out of. So, um, yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at with that. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, Jacqueline. Yeah, I mean, this was a concern for me, you know, going into the program. But like Ryan, I've just really communicated clearly with my editors. Hey, as a reminder, I have class tonight at 630. Um, you know, that's obviously been made a lot more simple with with COVID because we're not driving to campus and parking. <laughs> um, there have only been a few nights, like especially on Tuesdays, if there's a board of supervisors meeting, um, and then I have class at six thirty, where I've like turned in a story and then just immediately had to go to class. That's been pretty rare, thankfully. Um, there have been a few nights where like the copy desk is like messaging me and I'm in class. Uh, that's pretty easy to navigate. Um, just because it's usually not something super complicated. And if I had to miss class, I think the program is flexible enough and all the classes are recorded. Um, so as long as you like, the biggest thing that was stressed to us during orientation week was to communicate with your professors. Um, if you do need to miss a class, like if there's a wildfire, um, you know, I think that the professors are smart enough to put two and two together. If there's a huge fire and you're not in class, that's probably where you're at. Um, so they all just want you to su succeed. You know, I haven't had a single professor yet who I didn't feel like wasn't genuinely invested in me doing well. Um, it's not like in the movies where like they're asking you these impossible questions and want you to feel like an idiot. Like I just haven't experienced that yet. Maybe it's because it's on Zoom, uh, but I've just been really amazed at just how kind and incredibly smart the professors are and how understanding they are, like Ryan said. So I understand that anxiety. We have, we all have very full-time jobs, but um, you know, going to grad school is going to be hard regardless of, of when you do it, how you do it, and what program you do. One of our um, fellow students brought that up. He has an MBA already and he said, you know, that doing any master's program when you have a full-time job is hard. So there are going to be weekends where you give up time for fun because you're reading and that's the commitment you've 
signed up for, you know, to do, but I do find it to be a worthy commitment. All right, thanks, Jacqueline. Uh, Penny. Yeah, for those who are considering um, the full-time program, uh, law school is no joke. <laughs> It's no joke for the JD students and it's no joke for the MLS students. Before I started, my my partner, he, he's an attorney, so he's been through this and he's like, oh, it's law school light. It is not law school light. It is law school. And, um, and this semester, as Jason explained, you can take an extra class in your final semester, extra units. And I decided to do that. Um, and so I've got that extra class and whoo, so it's, it's, it's always a case of the grass is always greener and the part-timers are like, oh, Penny, you're so lucky you have all this time to study. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can barely keep up. So it's all perspective and whichever path you choose, it is, it is going to be challenging. You have to be very good about time management. I also make sure that I take time for myself in that like I joined the UCLA um, law school run club and we're on Strava because we can't meet together so we just you know plug in our mileage that way and so I get my runs in but um, I do not have free time I have some free time on the weekend but I do not have a full day on the weekends like every one of my yeah, three weekend days because I have no classes on Fridays um, every one of those days has at least a portion of it set aside so you you have to know what you're getting into <laughs> and your partners have to know what you're getting into great thanks so, so we've talked about the, the the program we've talked about you know managing your schedule in, in the program the next thing i want to shift to is our final topic and theme is uh is, is the community and so each, each of you you know so there's there's three of you here here you are but there's of course other students in the program there's professors and jd students and just you know it's ucla a large a large campus how how have you been able to uh connect with people through, through the program so uh just talk talk me through that experience uh, so far for you uh ryan well first of all i just got to say you know how awesome it is just to have other journalists in the program like you know just that alone has been such a great thing i mean here we are going into these courses with jd students um and this world that is is sort of is you know it's a bit of a mystical world coming from the out from the outside like just being able to go through it with with fellow journalists has been great um and uh um, and then, you know, at the same time, you're meeting like the vice president of Crackle, you know, de creative development or, um, you know, just these. Um, and as journalists, I guess we we have a certain sensitivity to this idea of like, you know, meeting interesting people. And so they're in this program. So um, I relish the opportunity to um, kind of hear their experience um, and to reach out to them. Uh, whenever possible outside of class so um uh you know just i've already connected with a few just over over social media even just to kind of get a taste of their lives um and what and and, and what makes them tick and 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 how they can and help me with um understanding the material so just just and i'll say it all came to a head, you know, during finals, during, during our, you know, last year in December, you know, here we are um, freaking out over finals and yet at the same time sort of coming together in a way where we can all sort of talk to all these people from these different um, uh, professions coming together to figure out, you know, the best way to study for something or, you know, like just that alone has been great. And I got to say, it's like, I am so looking forward to actually physically meeting them in one classroom one day. So just that alone, we got a long way to go because we, we have to actually meet each other physically, which hasn't happened formally yet. So I don't know. There, there you go. That, that is one of the interesting things about this last incoming class is, yeah, we, we haven't had an official in-person event yet, so we're, but we're hoping for this August that our, our orientation will be in person and that will be largely in person. You know, time will tell, but that those, those, are, the, those are the hopes for this, uh, this coming up year. Uh, but uh, Jacqueline. Yeah, um, it's been really interesting how close we've all gotten, considering we generally haven't met in person. I mean, me and Ryan met in court that one day just super randomly um 
and yeah, it's um, finals week, man. Whew, the private law final is the hardest test I've ever taken in my entire life. Um, I've never had a more stressful uh, 90 minutes of, or I guess I can't remember how long it was. I blacked out, um, but it's it was so hard. And it was really nice to be able to go on our uh, secret Slack channel and um, talk about just how we all managed through that. Um, and also just like help make each other feel better because we were all like, oh my God, I just fell out of law school, you know? And like Penny was like, no, you didn't Jacqueline. <laughs> and it's been great like to meet Ryan and Penny that like Ryan's totally right. Having other journalists in the program is wonderful. Um, and then when one, one of the funny stories was we were in a small group during orientation and me and I'll say one of the other journalists in the group, we were kind of railing on venture capital uh, firms um, and how they own newspapers. And one of our classmates um, worked at a venture capitalist firm and he was just sort of like, ee, you know, and it was like a really funny moment to remember that it is a really diverse program with people from all sorts of backgrounds. And you're just, you'll meet people you never would have otherwise met met and like they'll be from different political backgrounds and it's just really nice the conversations you can end up in um so yeah it's yeah the camaraderie is great uh and penny yeah i don't want to repeat anything but ditto on everything they said about camaraderie with within the journalists core um but um love Love my colleagues, my cohorts in the program, and then also the GD students. They're really cool. I, I you know, especially being a little bit older of a certain age, and um, no, they're they're super welcoming. The professors think we're like celebrities. Like, oh, we have a journalist in the class. I'm like, oh, I'm trying to hide. And <laughs> no, it's it's been great. Jacqueline did really well on that test. Just to let you know, just to to ease your minds people she did really great and um yeah no everyone is is here um for our success even the jd students so i've joined a number of um the clubs the student clubs and um have gotten to know a few of them and then of course within our cohorts i'm like good friends with the hr person whoever thought that was gonna happen but <laughs> <laughs> Look at Jacqueline. <laughs> but it's true. And everyone's got such interesting takes. I really appreciate that. You know, if, if we're talking about energy um, or environment, we've got somebody in our class that works for an energy company, but a green energy company. And so he's got like really interesting insights. Or we've got somebody who's done real estate deals. We've got a couple of people in the entertainment industry. Like it's really like we all come together. We all fit. Okay. Yeah, and I just want to throw in that I actually got to, I really quick, I did a cool thing where like I joined the um, a criminal justice student group and did like this interesting like inmates in different facilities write in for help. And so it's interesting as like a journalist to see like what I could offer. So there's like all these cool opportunities within the student groups too that I forgot to mention, but that was super interesting to read those letters. Hmm. Very, very cool. Uh, well, thanks so much for sharing your experience and following up on a couple of things that that Penny mentioned. Uh, she earlier said that that she's as old as dirt. Uh, I, I won't I, I won't comment on that specifically, but that the, the average age for a student in the program is 39 for the Master of Legal Studies. And in this last uh, this last start, we had a range for starting students anywhere from 19 to 72. So that kind of shows you know the diversity of of people in the program, including their their experience level. Uh, so that's uh, that's that. Also, uh, another side note is everyone in the whole Master of Legal Studies program uh, passed uh, the, the the private law class. So they're, they're <laughs> challenging, but but ever, everyone did it. Everyone did great. So, <laughs> uh, but as far as the camaraderie is is concerned, uh, for all the journalists who are here, if you're interested in applying if, and if you're accepted, of course, then uh, in your classes with you next year. Uh, Jacqueline's a part-time student. She'll be around still. Ryan's a part-time student. He'll be around still. Penny's graduating, but I'm sure she's, I, I sure hope and think she'll be around at a lot of the events uh, this next year. And so thus, uh, and, and then let alone all the new journalists will be entering the program as well. So, so we're really looking forward to forming that camaraderie. But with that, uh, with that being said, uh, that's all the questions we have. Thank you so much for taking the time. But I'd like to open it up to everyone to ask uh, questions, either about the program or specifically to, to the panelists. But again, thank you so much for the panelists for, for joining us today and taking the time.
All right, let's see. Looks like there's a couple questions. The first question is, um, can, can you repeat what you said about the uh, coronavirus and how it might impact this, this next year? So yeah, definitely, great question. So for the part-time students, if you're thinking about doing the program part-time, what the program will look like this next year if there's no coronavirus would be Tuesday, Thursday nights, 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. with Tuesday nights being on campus and Thursday nights being online. So if the coronavirus impacts things the way they did this year, then it's simple enough, same schedule, just Tuesday night will be online. So, so same day, same time, just online for Tuesday rather than in person. Uh, at the mo Without coronavirus, there's only one day a week on campus uh, on, on that Tuesday night. Now, if you're, if you're planning on maybe taking a sabbatical and doing the full time like, like Penny did this, this year, uh, then the classes would largely be on campus uh, throughout the day and then into the evening on a couple of those nights, the Tuesday, Thursdays. Uh, and then simply if it's the coronavirus is packing things, same schedule, just all that online. So, so that's, it's kind of the same idea. So that's kind of the answer to that question. All right. So someone asks for the current students here, what specializations are you in? Uh, so if, if uh, Ryan, could, could you start off by saying what specialization you're in? Uh, yeah, um, I'm in public interest, um, but, you know, I definitely flirted a bit with, um, you know, sort of the general, the, the, the general category or, um, uh, you know, just kind of keeping it something where I could sort of design on my own. But I think in the end, it just seemed like, you know, sort of the First Amendment stuff, the, um, the uh, criminal justice and uh, some other elements that just, it just seemed like all the classes were sort of falling into that public interest pocket. So that's, that's where I landed. Uh, thanks, uh, Jacqueline. Uh, I did, I'm doing public interest also. Great, uh, Penny? Public interest. Three for three, there you go, public interest. <laughs> Question is about how many hours of work per class is involved. Uh, so I'll, I'll answer that one. I think everyone kind of shared their experience as, as far as the rigor of, of the program, but as far as the overall average, because each class, you know, of course be a little bit different. But what, what we always say is for every one hour in class, on average, you'll spend two hours out of class. And so thus, if you're a part-time student and doing a couple classes a semester, you can expect it to be about a total of 20 hours of work week on average. That counts the in-class and out-of-class time. If you instead try to juice one class a week, I mean, one class a semester, then you'll be more at eight to 10 hours a week on average per week of work, counting in-class and out-of-class time. The question is, uh, shouldn't every journalist get some legal training? Uh, thoughts on what we are doing to make that happen? Um, yes, and I think this program is a perfect fit uh, for, for anyone who shares that opinion. Uh, and I, so I, I don't think we'll need to pass that question along as I, I imagine that the three panelists would agree since, since they're choosing to do this program. But that's exactly why we created this program, not just for journalists, but for everyone believing that uh, getting levels of, of legal training will assist you. But I think particularly for journalists, and I know UCLA School of Law was when we started this program, they brought me on to launch it, that, that journalist was an emphasis point because we know that you all are just such important parts of our society as checks on power you know, across the board, whether it be government or, uh, or entities or whatnot. And so that so making a great program for journalists was something that we really wanted to do. Uh, the question the question is considering, as Penny said, it's not law school light; it's law school. Uh, do any other of the journalist students feel any regret for not going for a full JD, uh, considering the rigor, commitment, and costs seem generally similar? Uh, so I will pass that over, but uh, the rigor is the same. The commitment is not uh, as far as time because the JD is a three-year full-time pro program. There is no uh, part-time option for the 
at UCLA School of Law. And our, our program is one year uh, equivalent. So it's a third of the time to complete it as compared to the JD program. The cost is also would be a third of the costs. Uh, if, if tuition is roughly the same between the two, but of course it's three years for a JD program not counting the scholarships for our program, of course. But if any, uh, but I'll definitely turn that over just generally if any one of the panelists kind of want to want to uh, jump on that for your particular feeling of uh, you're doing this program. Why did you choose this program instead of doing a JD program? So uh, if any three of you can just jump in if you'd like to answer that. Because I want to stay a journalist. <laughs> but and and they're not the equivalent in, in money at all. I mean, I heard one of the JDs say they it was about $200,000 um, investment that they're doing into their program. Um, I did always think I could be an attorney though. So that's where the, um, the academic challenge is for me. And I have to say that my grade last year, from, last semester from the one um, JD class that I took, I mean, for this semester, but I, I took one last and year last semester and three MLS classes, um, and I got an A minus, and that one meant the most to me. Like I was crying, I was so <laughs> happy. So I can do it, and I could have done it. I don't want to do it because I'm a journalist, but um, it's, it's all it, that's why it was the perfect program for me. Um, but yeah, it don't it, the, it's not equivalent the the price. I'm pr pretty confident. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Jack Lorraine, do you have anything on that? Um, I, I guess I would just agree with you, Jason. That 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 I think the time factor obviously was a was a thing for me. Um, there was maybe something about the fact that you know, at least on the core courses in the class, there was an awareness among professors that we are coming from different backgrounds and different professions, and that, you know that that perhaps. Um, you know, they would be catering the courses to us in a way that just sort of works in the context of our professions. And so um, that they wouldn't be coming to us straight as these people who want to be lawyers, but rather as just sort of in, you know, these are these are people who are doing their thing in, in the world. And, um, you know, we're going to teach them the law in that spirit. Mm -hmm. Great. I would just say it just depends on where you want to go career wise, you know, if you think that, you know, going to law school would be helpful to advance your career, do you know, do that, but I am finding that an MLS degree is more than sufficient if you want to stay a journalist, but have a deeper understanding of some aspect of the law or the world, because there are so many different types of classes you can take. Um, so it all just kind of depends on where you want to go in your career and also like what do you enjoy the most out of being a journalist and does that thing that you enjoy the most actually mean you want to be an attorney um so i just think it's all in like your priorities for how you want to live your life absolutely and thanks thanks for that question that, that was, that's a really that's a really good question a lot of people are kind of thinking that along similar lines jd or this or this Question is, uh, what are interactions with professors like? And are there office hours or something similar? And again, I'll just open up if any of the panelists want to jump in there. Yeah, they have Zoom office hours. Um, and generally, if, if that's bad for you for whatever reason, um, and this would probably be helpful for the part-timers that they're happy to schedule other times. Um, yeah, they're really personable. They are so smart. I mean, I feel like I'm I'm here to hang around really smart people. <laughs> they're really great. I really love the professors and they're very helpful in, um, there's a lot of paper writing that I'm doing this semester more than last semester. And they're just very open to talking about your ideas and, um, yeah, I mean, even I have a couple of professors that aren't on staff. They're actually working environmental attorneys, and yet they're so available, um, even though they have regular careers. So, I, I, what do you, what would you say, Jacqueline or Ryan? Yeah, I, I mean, one of my favorite things about last semester um, in private law, the class I mentioned, was that like after class, um, especially on 
whatever, whichever night it was the later class, um, we would stay for like at least 20 minutes with the professor and have just this big legal nerd out party um, where we would continue the conversation. And he was so great. He was like really, really jazzed about it. There was like once, only once in the whole semester where he was like, guys, I gotta go, I'm really tired. <laughs> um, because we would just pepper him with questions and, and you know, he would kind of like, we would debate a little with each other, but in a very like cordial way for the most part. Um, and, and, and the same with modern regulatory state, we would stay after in that and, and talk about different things. And that really surprised me just how willing they were to stay after class, even though it was on Zoom. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would show that, that all that. I, you know, I, I even feed um, one of my professors my favorite 80s pop hits because I'm a big 80s pop hit guy. And he's he is too, and so I've I've been sending him um, suggestions, uh, um, but but also just impressed with um, uh, just the ability to I, I think calling it improvisation is probably shrinking it to something they're narrowing it too far. Um, maybe it's a little too simple, but like um, there the the way the class flows. Um, uh, is pretty amazing how they will take something that you might say from the readings um, and then they'll expand that into a whole discussion and like that whole interaction how they how they how they um, how they sort of improvise off of that that um, question or issue is pretty amazing how they turn that into a whole discussion and learning experience is, is like is always kind of impressed by. May I mention one thing that hasn't been discussed, and I don't know if it was discussed back when I was investigating the program, probably because you guys didn't know, but we get such amazing guest speakers in the classes. It's another big advantage, but um, we, you know, we got the head of the California Air Resources Board in environmental law and the lawyer who prosecuted, um, well not prosecuted, but petitioned um, for the protected status of the polar bears. We, we, we've got the author of this crazy book that we read for social media and like 10 other professors showed up because it was so special to get her. It's called the age of surveillance capitalism, by the way, it's really scary as all heck. Um, and she's a professor from Harvard. And so she spoke to our class. It's one of the good things about Zoom is you can kind of like book really good people and, and they're in their kitchens. Um, and so we've had access to some really interesting guest speakers. Um, and I think it's the poll of the UCLA professors that, that get them in there. And quite a few, yeah, we had the, the head lawyer from Parler <laughs> and social media. I mean, that's like kind of crazy when you think about it. So that's another aspect of the program that um, doesn't really get talked about much, but it was a happy surprise. Very nice. It sounds like I'm gonna have to start talking about that more. Very, very good. Thank, thank you, Penny. Uh, the question is, what is the average class size? And so for that, I'll, I'll go ahead and jump in for that one. And so you're, you're gonna get, it, it depends on the class. And so this next year, the core curriculum class with master legal studies students is likely to be right around 60 students for the class. Now, uh, when you head into your specialization classes, uh, some of them will be around that size, you know, like 30 to 70 ish. Uh, but then there's also some seminars which you're able to do, which are somewhere, which will be around 10 to 20 students in the seminar. So smaller, smaller settings. So that, that's about the class sizes that you can expect for this next year. Uh, question is, what courses are available to teach journalists about our rights under constitutional law? Are there any special courses focused on journalism rights covering uh, freedom of speech? So there are uh, numerous classes that cover specific topics. So there's, there's, you wouldn't find a class that's labeled, you know, protection of journalists or the, that type of thing. But instead, you have first a class on the First Amendment. So you have a First Amendment class, and then you have other classes where constitutional law is uh, significantly discussed. And then when you take your specialization classes, of course, you'll you have a, a large array of, of those types of topics as far as what the rights of individuals are journalists or not in all sorts of different areas. So that's, so you'll kind of see, uh, so that you'll have a lot of flexibilities to choosing classes that are uh, right up that realm or in different topics as you see fit. Uh, 
All right, that's all the questions we have. Again, I just want to thank the panelists so much for coming today. And thank you also, everyone, for taking some time out of your day to learn more about the Master of Legal Studies program. Applications are open, and so you can uh, email us and request an application uh, if you uh, if, if you'd like on the on the website, if you request the application, then you can get it through that. Um, also, again, April 1st is the application deadline for uh, the, the scholarship, the full ride tuition scholarship. So have a great rest of your day. Connect with us. Send us an email if you have questions. We'd be more than happy to help.